Hello, welcome back to Pseudo Regalia, this is BioEnchanted, and today we'll be exploring areas we couldn't explore before, now that we have this move. And this time remember to record the bloody audio. <laughs> yeah, that was quite a tricky little wall run thing, I had to do that a few times before I actually got it right. All that's really back here is a health upgrade, but that's always nice to have. Given they give us more chances at actually doing those kind of moves. Yeah, I got kind of lucky with that. Because <laughs> I messed up the wall when I could have messed up that whole thing, but I managed to kind of pull it off. So let's also head to this little area and see what this involves. Because we saw this before, ages ago, but now we can actually do it. After a few tries. Because the main problem with these kind of corridors is the very sharp corner makes it very easy to not know what's coming and therefore kind of start from the wrong position. And then of course if you accidentally do a bounce attack, yeah as you can see I lost a lot of health trying and failing at this. One thing I quite like here is you have to actually hang on to that bubble's power up so you can use it to finish the jump which is a fairly cool way of using those bubbles because before you just kind of use them immediately. Now this I not quite, this is quite a tricky bit really, this little alcove here. So that's obviously not going to work, that wasn't what I was trying to do. I was trying to do this, but clearly that's not quite working either. I think I was close though, I just kind of, um, didn't commit. I think if I'd used the pillow I might have got up there. For now let's see what this room's involving. It's quite an interesting room, it's quite decrepit and it's got a very um, unique structure because of the whole fact that the floor seems to be kind of collapsing beneath it but you can see more natural stone beneath the actual tiling as well which is a cool visual touch. It's a fun way of combining textures. I'm kind of getting the hang of the wall one as well and how it interacts with the other moves. It's always nice as well when games like this have relatively easy moves to do as well, but this, I kind of just jumped up there to see if there's anything up there. It doesn't look like there is though. Might go back there later to see, but that ledge looks pretty blank. This way is interesting, but let's check the other way first to see what how this, these areas connect together, because this way, we have a bit of a thing here, and then further down, You'll notice a very familiar looking set of vines. Yeah, we're at the top of that other room, we couldn't get up. So of course if we go up that down that way, we'll not be getting back up here again. Without going all the way around, so let's not go that way. That's just the way back to that one um, room where we got the healing power up thing. Here's another somewhat tricky room as well. Seems quite, quite a lot of quite tricky rooms actually, which is quite interesting. It makes it quite fun to play, but also it can be quite frustrating at times. But again, you just need to figure out the geometry and get the hang of how the wall one works and how it intersects with the other jumps. Because you can see if we run out of jumps, we can actually switch to a wall one once we've done them all. And here. Can't see really see any way to get up there. This isn't really any good place to jump off. Of. There might be something I'd come back to or come back from. Or I've still got a few power ups to get, so I might get something that'll get me even higher. We'll see. So I want to check it out though, just in case. But yeah, this is just kind of. I wouldn't have quite enough talk from the not quite talk, but quite enough 
momentum from that jump to get up there from there. This is a cool room though, but also as you can see, this is the beginning of that room we were in before. At least it looks like it is. It may not be, I'll have to double check that later, but for now, it looked like the another entrance to that one room. Because that floor looked very familiar. Here we have quite a lot of civilians, which is interesting, because we haven't really seen many of them. It seems like they're all sheltering here at the theatre. And the theatre is currently closed because of all of the miasma, all that purple stuff that kills us. So of course we can't get into the theatre from here. So we need to do something a bit different. There's a few ledges that are very obvious here. So let's use these to get on top of these little um, eaves. Quite big eaves, actually. Now we're up here. We can get on top of this little bit of ceiling. And drop down behind those guards into the theatre. This is just a way back out, I think. So now we're in the theatre proper. We've been in the Twilight Theatre before, but we weren't really able to get to very many places in it. We were just more of a through line, but now we're actually in the main amphitheatre. There's a lot of we can't do anything with there, but there's also this really cool big theatre area, which is a very cool area to see. I like the massive vaunted ceiling, it's very Tomb Raider in its design. And it feels very desolate, but it also feels like it was once used for something. Because the Tomb Raider games, at least the classic ones, were always very good at that, at making it look like it was once served a function before it fell into ruin. And of course we have a big item in this big cage, and it's one of the big keys. You can just see through the bars. So let's explore on the theatre, shall we? First, this is a little secret door to the back. This is a pretty cool room. Very distinctive. That was embarrassing. It's also completely unnecessary because you can just launch yourself across the room. I really like how far that jump takes you. And now we're locked in. We a lot, so we have a lot of enemies to deal with. So let's deal with that, shall we? Starting with this weirdly placed set of fingers in the ceiling. At least they die pretty quickly now. I like that the maids have different ways of attacking as well, like some of them do the kind of flippy moves and charge moves, and then you have the ones that throw plates at you as well. It gives the enemy variety just a little bit more variety. But it seems as though the maids just have three different moves they can cycle between. It's just, it seems as though that one wasn't doing that. I think it just uses the plates when you're far enough away. But it's a fun move though. Very reminiscent of the old Hunter Mansion game we did a while ago. Yeah, currently walk one from there, it wouldn't allow me to. But there's another side of the room, which has a much easier route. If I don't mess it up. Of course there was something I was missing, there's something I've been doing this entire video and that I just forgot to do in that case. This. Always get extra height. That's important to any platformer really, any platform you ever play, always make sure to get extra height. 
Otherwise, you look a fool. So there's a couple of different ways we can go. That little room down there, and then that room across from there. Let's head down there first, so that looks interesting. And this is interesting too, these very kind of interestingly like placed things, but basically means we can't just kind of go above them, we have to kind of engage with them. I think that's probably why they like that, so you can't just do a double jump, but this just brings us out here. Do you want really to need to be here, so let's just go back and see what the upper, little, uh, the upper route takes us to. all the way at the top of that room. And here we have an interesting little lever. This takes us all the way out onto this really high up balcony. And now we can reach these other balconies from here. And this seems like a very suspiciously laid out set of balconies given we can see that power up over there. So let's head over there shall we? It's a very easy set of um, uh, platforms to jump up, but of course the difficulty is getting to the first one and not falling off like an idiot. I'm glad that the whole theatre is made out of that same material that you can kind of break as well when it's cracked. Although of course we can't break this material because that will break the level design. <laughs> but it gives it a cool visual though, it gives the theatre a very distinctive look, and it's one that really fits the whole idea of it being a theatre as well. It makes it feel very um, gaudy, very decorative, which is fitting for theatre. So there's also this door I've only just noticed under here as well. Well, of course, but I only just noticed I'm enjoying the recording. I didn't see it before I turned that camera just then. So before we go forward, let's go through these boxes and get another health power up. There's quite a lot of these in this video. Not the anything this way, so let's just keep moving on, shall we? And see what the direction takes us to. This is an interesting little box. I think we've... Uh, not quite this box, this is, I thought I was thinking of a different room. This is a pretty cool room though, although it's difficult to navigate when you... And in this direction it's quite easy though. So let's drop down and take a chance on it, shall we? This room's actually quite difficult, but not in this direction. We'll be able to guess what the path what the path is to get back, but for now, let's continue moving on and see what we can find in this direction. This is the uh, thing I was thinking of. This very distinctive-looking cage that's quite big and quite fancy and quite memorable. We've seen it before from the outside. That one room that was quite difficult to navigate, but from in here, it's much easier. Of course this cage is much easier to get out of than it is to get into, which is weird that's not normally how cages work. But we have a power up over there, so let's head over towards it, shall we? And luckily not completely screwed up on the way. So let's also see what's down this little path here to see this platform, which really doesn't seem to be anything, it's just a way back to that first area. So let's head back up towards the cage now. There's a very obvious staircase thingy here, which I tried to use the first time I was in this room, but I screwed it up. So this time I'll figure out how to actually make it work. It's all a matter of remembering how the wall kick works and trying not to accidentally trigger it a second time. Or just not trigger it at all. I'm just staying close to the inside lap it gives you more room. Of 
quite a satisfying jump there to get back in there. I could have gone the safe way, but I didn't want to. So this is the hard part now. This takes me a long time to figure out, on the original recording anyway, on the non-edited version. But it's just a matter of chaining the bubbles with the wall ones and just timing the and, uh, the bubble burst thing properly. And like a lot of difficult to chain things in this game, it's quite satisfying to pull off. And of course, save the bubble burst until near the end, because you'll need it. So now it's time to head back, which is... The, that's the hard part over now for this particular section. If I didn't screw it up anyway. So we still have quite a lot of theatre to, exa to examine. So now we've gone all those little ways. Let's go to two obvious ways on the side of the cage, shall we? Now this way... Let's do this later. Because this looks like a one-way trip. Let's see what's in the direction first, because it seems like it'll be a bit... It might be safer. That was my logic anyway, when I walked away from that path. Because, as I find out, as I get across here, this part's quite tricky. And takes a bit for me to work out the timing to get across all these honeycomb walls. I guess not really honeycomb, but they look like honeycombs, that's why I'm calling them. I'm not quite sure what they're supposed to be, because they don't quite fit the aesthetic properly. Maybe from former Backstage Abbey, maybe it was former scenery that got corrupted by the thing, but this way down we have a pole, which makes it easier to get back up again. So it's a lot less scary than going in the other direction. We also have a chair here as well, so we can just chill out and get some health back. Because that's actually what these little seats do, is they allow us to refill our health without using the little magic meter. And that was kind of the first time I discovered what they actually did, before they were just there for decoration. It's always satisfying to hit projectiles back in this game, though it doesn't really do that much, but it's always fun to actually pull it off. And of course, be careful not to keep losing your sword like an idiot. <laughs> Don't know why that kept happening, I was doing really badly in this fight <laughs> against a very basic main enemy. Don't want to retreat to the stool, so let's just move forward, shall we? Because it's not that we don't have plenty of magic anyway. And this way also looks quite suspicious. So I figured I'd take a look. Because it looked like the hallway may have curved around in either direction. But no, it's just kind of a dead end. But we'll be going that way a different direction, in a different um, elevation. Quite like this whole kind of backstage area for the theatre, like all the, the whole theatre basement area. Well, this little uh, wall one uh, I found quite tricky. I thought I had to go through that middle pillar, but no, you actually it's easier to go around the back this way. So I kept going down that, that middle path, but it was wouldn't work. At least I couldn't make it work. Now you have to be careful because one of these walls is corroding. So let's not try and run on that wall, shall we? that will just hurt us. Because it's a miasma wall. And here we have a really annoyingly placed enemy. I hate this guy. Yeah, I tried to go that way. I just kind of got pumped out of the air by that guy. So let's just move forward, shall we? In a different direction, a much easier direction. Because we have this balcony I couldn't get to from the lo below, uh, now we're up here. So I'm kind of in this back area of this room. 
And that guy nearly knocked me off, which really annoyed me. I'm glad it's gone now. Now this pot's actually quite tricky, because you have to kind of do a bit of a back and forth across this wall. But it also requires us to combine the wall run with the wall kick in quite tricky ways. Took me a few tries to get up there as well. There's quite a few um, jumps in this game that you have to make and that I take a long time to actually get right because they're just quite difficult jumps, to be honest. So let's start by going in one direction. And now let's carefully kick back. Not that way, that's not how I went. I didn't mean literally kick, stop kicking. Luckily it's easy enough to catch yourself on that pole in this area. So there's less chance of screwing up. As you can see we have to chain this and somehow do that as well, catch back onto the wall with a wall run, which is very hard to do because the game really wants you to do a kick. And again, this looks suspicious but it was really nothing. I can't really see anything over that way, so let's just move forward to this very obvious light. And here we've made it to one side of the theatre. So of course we've partially opened the cage. Because you can see there's only one layer of it now, I think. So let's go in your direction to open the other side of the cage. With much trickier platforming. Once I've made sure, of course, that there's nothing else. And saved it, obviously. Just wanted to get that health back, because some of these jumps can get quite tricky, and I wanted to make sure I'd have, a, I'd have as many tries as I can. Yeah, this whole area really reminds me a lot of Tomb Raider 2, which I only recently got around to actually beating. Because <laughs> until a few, um, I think maybe a year ago, I didn't actually, I never actually beat the classic Tomb Raider games. So now I've beaten Tomb Raiders 1 and 2, that's nice. I've got 3 and 4 and 5, but I haven't got around to those yet. So I've had other things to play. So this opens both gates. Well, let's go this way first. Well, we can't. So let's go the other way first. <laughs> but it's nice that these doors aren't on any kind of timer, they just stay open, which is nice. And this is weird because the wall has the cracks on the other side, which when you first see the wall uh, with no cracks on one side, then cracks on the other. It seems like it'll only work in one direction, but no, it works in both directions. It's a bit strange, that really. And yeah, here, this switch activates multiple grates all at once. As does this one. As you can see, that moves the elevator and the gate. We'll need to remember that later, but for now, let's get this new power up. The Soul Cutter, which allows us to fire a projectile from our weapon, which is quite hard to aim, at first at least, until you figure out its main quirk. But this is also the entire reason the first person mode even exists, is to make this power up much easier to aim, because it has this weird spinny thing. It's kind of like a, a leaf cutty kind of attack, like a wind cutter, but that makes it quite hard to aim, because sometimes it kind of goes in all kinds of directions. So of course you have to use it to get back up. As you can see, it is quite hard to aim in the right direction because it's very easy for it to accidentally go in like an odd direction. Which is why the first person view is so instrumental. I don't know why I threw the sword there, I think I was just frustrated. Also wrong button.
There we go. Yeah, the next room I'll figure out the whole, oh, use the first person mode. <laughs> and that'll make it much easier to pull off. So here we go. Yeah, this one we have to fire quite accurately because of how long it is to get there. It's quite a fun power to have though. It's nice that we have a projectile now so we can hit switches from a frog because that gives us a lot more options in certain areas. And here we have a relatively simple thing to do now, just a little wall run to get outside. I quite like this area with the big skybox and everything like that. It, it looks really good on the outside of the theatre. And here is where we learned the second primary thing about this power. The main quirk here. So the mistake I tried to make here is using the first person to... Well, not here yet. I'll make it in a minute when I actually start making these jumps. Yeah, this is just me testing out that other switch to see what that does and make sure it does the same thing, which it does. So here's the primary mistake I make. You can't aim down. You can only aim laterally. So you have to make sure you're at the same level as the switch. Because before I was standing on one of those upper platforms and trying to aim down. But it just does not work that way. The power does not move downwards or upwards. It only moves laterally. So make sure you're on the same level as the switch you're trying to hit. Otherwise you'll just get frustrated. And here's some interesting little platforming bits, just kind of... I always quite like going outside of uh, certain locations. Like, there was a really cool thing in uh, this one game um, on the Xbox, that if I ever get the uh, capture card things working again, I might do, which is called Quantum Theory, which has a really cool level where you're on the rooftop of the cathedral thing. And it really feels like a cathedral rooftop because it doesn't feel like it was designed to be walked on. It's all sheer cliffs and like sheer ledges and things. So it definitely feels like you're on a rooftop you shouldn't be on. And that's a really satisfying level design. I really enjoy that sort of thing. So I hope they'll be able to do Quantum Theory one day because it's got some really cool levels and some really cool ideas. But for now, let's stop talking about a game that I'm not playing yet. <laughs> So we go up this way, we have yet another way out onto here, and now the second cage is down. So we now have the big key for this area, that's 3 of 5 now. So that's pretty cool. So I'll see you next time as we continue to explore. Goodbye. Please remember to like comment, subscribe, and check out my Patreon as well. Speaking of, thank you to James Rossi for supporting me on Patreon.